All right, Ari, close this off, man. What do you want to complain about tonight? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yo, you guys hear me? Right? Loud, loud and clear. First of all, Han Solo, you're in my Mount Rushmore uh, with CP, JD, and uh, Jay from Florida. So definitely <laughs> a big fan. Um, you know, the reason why the Hawks are just good and not great is because of you know, fiscal irresponsibility. They have $75 million tied mm -hmm. into John Collins, Clint Capella, mm -hmm. and Bogdan Bogdanovich, and that's just not going to get it done. But um, I know you said Leon Rose uh, said the shop is open. I just want to know if that's coming from Leon or Gerson Rosas. I don't know who's running the show these days, Han. I don't know what's going on. I'm hearing mixed things. I'm a little confused. What I want to complain about today, CP, mm -hmm. is, not, is not about playing the young guys. <clears throat> It's about playing for optics, okay? Optics is the reason why the Knicks have not been good for the past 20 years. The reason why R.J. Barrett plays and no other young guy plays is because he was the third pick. Derrick Rose was the first pick in Chicago. I guarantee you, if Quentin Grimes or Emmanuel Quickly were a top 10 pick, they'd be playing more, playing more, all right? This is the difference between a Knicks organization and the Miami Heat. Mm -hmm. Eric Spolstra benched Duncan Robinson making $90 million a year off of mm -hmm. terrible contracts for undrafted Max Struess because they care about winning games. They don't care about optics, okay? They don't care about contracts. They don't care about things like that. I heard you say, Han, that Tibbs is going to play the people that earn it the most and that hustle and that put in effort. But I saw Julius Randle walk up the floor every single game last year, smack laptops, and get upset when his team won. Meanwhile, I see Emmanuel quickly diving on the floor for every loose ball, playing his heart out, and he doesn't get minutes because Alec Burks needs to play more minutes than Nikola Jokic, even though the Knicks are mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, right? So I don't think it's a play the young guys per se, but I just want it to be a meritocracy, Han. I just want it to be the, pr the people that give you the best chance to win, you play them. You don't play someone because they get a good contract, they, they're, they're getting paid a lot of money, or because they're in their 10th season or whatever, right? It's those type of things that I think set a, bed, set a bad precedent. And I just want to understand, like, why the Knicks are so optics-oriented always, man. Why is it always optics? Why can't we just get the best players to play? And, 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 and that's it. Obi Toppin makes one turnover, he gets pulled. Julius Randle's spin move turnover three times in a row, he gets to, he, he gets to play 40 minutes a game. It's not fair, it's not right, and it's wrong, all right? It's wrong. So I don't want to know why it's always about optics and not about results. Thank you for taking my call. Ari going 10 toes down. Rate that call in the chat, man. One to five. One being trash, five being facts. Throw some fire emojis in there. Let me know what you guys think about Ari's call. Ari from Manhattan going in. I appreciate it, Ari, but that, that was a terrible call on so Ooh. many levels. And I'm going to say, I'm gonna say, here's the problem. I say this a lot. Of, sometimes you, you're just reading the wrong stuff. And you like there are fans who want to only believe the bad things that are said about their team because they just know, well, that's why we suck, because here's more negative information that isn't quite accurate. Right. Dan Rose is the president of the organization. He's in charge. He's the final say guy. Gerson Rosas is a consultant in the front office. And what you read was that Gerson was the point man in the negotiations with the Jets. That's fairly accurate because just so everybody knows, Danny Ainge was not on any of the wasn't calls. On it. Yeah. So this whole idea that Danny wants this and Danny wants Danny Ainge was not involved yeah. like that. Danny Ainge was like, oh, you know, on the you know the seventh tee, and he check his phone and it's like got his update on where the talks are today. I mean, that's reality. So Leon and Danny had talked in Vegas. During the summer league, and that's you know then they, they you always do that pass it on to your lieutenants. I mean, that's reality. So you know this this thing about I don't know who's in charge because Gerson, come on, like you're being dramatic. So just yeah. walk that one away, stuff it, put it in an envelope, yeah. mail it to nowhere. Okay, don't yeah. ever open that envelope yeah. again. And and the people I spoke to on that topic said that that wasn't like an an odd thing. You know, it it, no, it that's how you do it. Thing. Yeah. The lieutenants always do the talk. All yeah. right. Just anyways. But I, look, it makes for good fodder. And then fans get all worked up. Yeah. It's the way it is. <clears throat> now, this, again, 
it's not an optics thing. It's an NBA thing. It's just how it works. You have a guy who's a vet who was an all-star the year before. It's not It's not about the money as it is about his status, who he is. And I agree with you. There were times where I was like, come on, Tib, sit the guy. Like, he's a mess. Take him out. But when you're a coach, you can lose a room real fast if you lose a vet. That happens. It's a reality. So it's easy for fans to say, meritocracy, play only the guys that play hard. That's easy to say, but it doesn't work. Because some of the guys that play hard aren't that good. So they have to play hard. And I'm going to play a guy that's not that good, and we're going to just now, we're going to be down by 30, and then I'm going to turn to the vet and be like, hey, can you save my ass, please? Like, guys, come on. It's not as easy as you think it is. Sometimes you've got to ride with your vet and you've got to just trust them. And I mean, when I say a vet, I'm talking about an established vet. And Randall is an established vet. That's a fair thing to say. Whether you liked what you saw last year, and I didn't like any of it. But it's just reality. Like, you got to play him. You got to keep playing him and you got to hope he gets it right. You got to have his back. You got to just try to work him through this. But behind the scenes, trust me, behind the scenes, you can get in his ass about things. You absolutely can. Mm. But the world doesn't need to know about it. Because you can have men, they tell you what, meet me at 8 a.m. for film, just me and you. And you could tear him up. But the world doesn't need to know about it because as a veteran, you respect him enough to in the post game say, we trust him, we'll stick with him and all that stuff. And then tomorrow morning when nobody's around, show him everything he did wrong and tell him this is not, we're not tolerating this. Like that, that's what you do with veterans because that's how you develop that respect and mutual respect. And the last thing you want around the league is to see like, oh, this is how they treat people. Can't have that, right? It's not optics. And don't say that RJ only played because he was the number three pick. That's insane. RJ played because he was good. Cream rises to the top, man. He's good. That's why he played. Yeah. He's good. Because why did Kevin Knox, who was a top 10 pick, not play? Why didn't he play? Yeah. Well, he's top 10 pick. Optics. Got to play him. No. No, even Fizz, even Fizdale was like, I can't play this guy. Yeah. Like the first year they played the crap out of him because they really, you could tell they weren't trying to win. Like you saw what was happening at the end. They were just giving him minutes and all that stuff. But then the following year when it was like, all right, we actually got to play. It was pretty quick how fast like yeah. he fell out of favor. No optics there. It's just that's when you just realize guys will play themselves into a lineup. They'll play their way out. But it's not about optics. Quickly played a lot. Tibbs Rookie loved year. him. Rook, Tibbs yeah. loves Grimes. In fact, you, you said it. When Grimes got his chance, he started playing. Then he got hurt. It was unfortunate. Because he was playing so well. He was there. He had won the job. He got the job, and he was playing. Then he got hurt. It sucks, but it's true. So I hate the fact that I have to defend this all the time. Now, I'm with you on the Burks thing. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Burks thing, I don't get I'll yeah. never get it. But that's the only thing I don't get. All the rest of it, I'm, I was watching this from afar. I was always like, yeah, I see what he's doing. Like, I see what he's doing. So... Well, I know it's going to happen now, by the way, CP. There'll be clips of this. Yeah. Han goes off defending Tibbs. Like, I yeah. know it's going to happen. I don't care because Tom Thibodeau is a two time coach of the year. He's one of the most respected coaches around the NBA. And I will trust other coaches like Greg Popovich who go, hey, one thing you guys got right was your head coach. Like, I'll trust guys who say things like that to me. So I'll believe, like, all right, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. There are some things that I can't understand. He's a bit stubborn, but that's every coach is like that. So I don't care if it looks like I'm defending the guy and all that other stuff and trying to make excuses. I'm not making excuses. I'm telling you what I know, what I've observed, what I've been told. Like, I'm not just sitting in my basement, literally, coming up with off the top of my head what I think is happening. I'm telling you what I know is happening when it comes to rotations and decisions and all that stuff. But we've got to get away from the young guys, the young guys, the young guys. Because as I just pointed out a few minutes ago, 70% of your rotation is quote-unquote young guys. They're going to play. But you, Julius Randle's an all-star. That's a fact. 
You got to give him a chance to give you a redemption year to make up for whatever happened last year. And we'll find out was last year him or was two years ago him? Which guy is it? We'll know by Christmas. We'll know by Christmas. And if by Christmas it's last year's guy back again, trust me, he will not have a very long runway at that point. That's how I feel. Yeah. That's not, I haven't been told that, but that's my opinion is he will reach that point with the franchise that, okay, this ain't working. This might not be the best market for you. It's time to move on. But you got to give him that chance first. 